Happy Monday, everyone, and happy birthday, Yoda. I hope you get to have some fun with this one. It's gonna be a little bit of a burner. It's gonna be a little good time. Smaller numbers, but yeah, it's gonna be a good time. Happy birthday, and I hope everyone throws some love your way. Uh, Facebook messages, whatever you want to do, send it out there. But uh, super special day and a great start to the week. So what we got for you guys? Quick little warm up. We have a plank lean for two to down dog for three to five reps. Forearm plank for three seconds. The forearm side plank for three seconds. Three times through that sequence. Humeral glide knee push up for three to five reps. Two to three rounds. Then we're gonna move into a next piece, which is gonna be a little bit more core focused. Laying L sit for ten to thirty seconds. Laying toe touch, 5 to 10, with a 1 to 2 second hold at each position, so above and at the bottom. Tuck hollow with extension for 5 to 10, with a 1 to 2 second hold on each position as well, for 2 to 3 rounds. From there, we're going to focus our attention to the lower body. We're going to work through some single leg RDL work, 3 to 5 aside. And there's a single leg uh, good morning with rotation for 3 to 5. Into our sumo squat for 3 reps at a 3 run 3. Finishing off with a jump squat and a side lunge, both 20 seconds uh, a piece. So 20 seconds, rest 10, and then hit that side lunge for 20 seconds, just for movement. You don't have to try and crush your soul on those things, but just move well, get yourself fired up, maybe speed it up as you get closer and closer to the work set to get your heart rate up and ready for the workout. But again, it's just to prime up the tissues, get things ready to go. From there, we move into our work set today, and we have a little kind of combo today. We start off with four rounds of work. You're gonna take down six push-ups, eight squat thrust, and that's a squat thrust, even if you, you normally do full burpees. I want you guys to do squat thrust today for eight. It's gonna be a fun little challenge for you guys to get that good plank. Then you're gonna lay down your back, 10 pike sit-ups and 12 jump squats or regular air squat. That's up to you. You'll hit that piece for four rounds, nice and steady. You'll rest three minutes, and then you're gonna move into the next phase, which is gonna be four more rounds of that same work set, but taken in, re in reverse. So you're gonna take down 12 jump squat, 10 pike sit up, eight squat thrust, and six good push ups. So it's gonna be, have a slightly different feel going backwards, but it's gonna be just as fun. All right, so two, four round work sets, creating one nice little work set with a three minute rest in between. Looking like it's gonna be a good time. Let's get you warmed up and ready to go. All right, guys, let's get our feet under our hips. We'll take the arms big and tall up overhead. We're gonna start with a little shrug. We're gonna pull those shoulders back down. We're gonna reach to one side, big reach. We'll come back up and over to the other side, big reach. Come back up, scratch your back with both hands. We're gonna pull the ribs in. We're gonna reach with the elbow. Come down, reach with the elbow. Come down, again, reach with the elbow. Come down, and reach with the elbow, and back down. Big stretch overhead. Big reach to one side, big side bend, over to the other side. Oh, come back down, hands to the hips. We'll take the hips around a few times, nice and gentle. And then we'll go the other way, nice and easy. And from here, we'll come back to the center. Big, tall stretch overhead. Take it all the way to the floor, touch those toes. Walk the shins. Come down, bring the foot, and step back into your lizard. Nice and square in those hips. Take the arm up. Bend at the 90, we're gonna reach straight ahead, and then pull back, and then reach straight ahead, pull back, and straight ahead, and pull back. Big stretch up, and we'll rotate for one forearm to the floor. We'll come back up to the sky, plant the hand, step back into your down dog, reaching those hips. We'll come back through that plank, step the other foot up, nice and square in those hips. We'll take the inside hand all the way up, Bend the 90, big stretch, pull back, big stretch forward, pull back, and big reach forward, and pull back, big stretch up, rotate forearm to the floor, we'll come back up, plant the hand, we'll step back into that down dog, reaching those hips, come back into our plank, and then from here, tiptoe those feet all the way up, roll yourself up, big tall stretch, Stretch. Ooh, bring those hands down. Let's rock and roll. If you'd like to do any extra gentle cool, or sorry, cool down, warm up, please do so. Pause the video, take that down. I'm gonna get you moving into that next phase of work, which is gonna start off with our plank leans. We're gonna hit up a, a plank lean for two to down dog. 
So I'm gonna show you first off to the front uh, for a couple reps, just so you can see the lean. First things first, though, I'm gonna get my hands under my shoulders. I'm gonna pull my ribs and hips into that good plank and press my shoulders to the sky. I'm gonna initiate through my upper body, so I'm pulling my body side to side with those arms and not the hips. So I'm staying super strong through those shoulders. Then I'm gonna pull the hips back, keeping those armpits wrapping around my body as I sense and maintain a good shoulder position. And then I come back into my plank, pulling the ribs and hips, pressing the shoulders up, and getting ready for rep two. So from the side, again, I get myself set up so my hands are under my shoulders, pulling my ribs and hips into that nice hollow, pressing my shoulders up to the ceiling. I'm going to lean to the left, keeping my shoulders over my hands, and then I'm going to come back over to the right, setting those shoulders, and then pulling the hips back into that down dog, and then coming back into that plank. The big thing again, you guys, with this down dog position is making sure that those shoulders and those lats are wrapping around our body. So as we pull back into that plank into the down dog, I really want you to focus on maintaining your neck and your shoulder position. So take your time with that. Really set it up in the plank so you can maintain it as you move into the down dog. Forearm plank for three seconds and forearm side plank is what's coming next. So I'm gonna go to the side so you guys can see this a little bit better. So in my tabletop, I'm just gonna get myself set up, elbow under shoulder. I'm gonna set my feet back into my full plank. And from here, I'm just gonna pull my ribs and hips in. I'm gonna get myself set up. I'm gonna hold for three seconds. Then I'm going to rotate over to the side. And then I'm going to rotate back through. And then I'm gonna rotate to the other side. Hold it for three seconds. And then that's one rep. So I'm gonna use that middle uh, forearm plank as a transitionary plank, just to make sure I'm tight so I can rotate. But don't worry about holding that one in the middle for three seconds. Just use it as a chance to make sure you're set before you roll to the second. When you come back after the second side in that side plank, that's one full rep. And you'll take that down for three reps in total. Now, if you're looking at that going, that's really tough for me to maintain that, that forearm plank into the side plank. That's fine. You can play around with it from the knees. So if you're looking at this, you're going to set it up. Elbows are still under the shoulders, nice and long and set. I lower to my knees. I do the same thing. I set, making sure that that's nice and set up here. My knees are dropped, and I come into that side plank position. And then I come back in to my knees, and then I can get set. And you'll notice I'm using my hand as a little helping tool in that transition from forearm plank to side plank. So there's nothing wrong with that either. If you're more comfortable hitting up a nice solid middle forearm plank and then just kind of setting yourself up afterwards for a slightly longer forearm side plank and just separating the two pieces instead of making it into a hybrid combo, be my guest. I want you to work on both those. So work on that side and that forearm. But if you want to separate the two, hold them for anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds per side and on the forearms. So there's another option for you. Last but not least in this upper body focus, we go down to the floor and work our human row five. So I'm gonna lay on my stomach. My hand is gonna be underneath my, my elbow. My body's gonna be set up in that nice solid position for my push-up. I'm going to pull my shoulders forward, again, where I don't want them, and I'm going to pull them back, which really isn't going to change my elbow position. The elbows should stay, for the most part, stacked over my hands and wrists. Once my shoulders are set back, I'm going to squeeze my glutes and pull my ribs and hips in, press myself up into that nice, neat plank, and then I'm going to lower myself forward and down at the bottom of that push-up position, and then relax. So again, shoulders come forward, where we don't want them. Shoulders come back, set and strong. Ribs and hips, press. Maintaining that good strong shoulder position as I come down, and then relaxing and resetting. So something we wanna think about as we are lowering down from that position, we're maintaining that nice stacked elbow over wrist, and I'm creating that tripod between my chin and my hands. All right, so at the bottom. So make sure we're slightly coming forward and down. 
Now, if you have trouble getting that press, and that's okay, we want to maintain this position, what we can set ourselves up with is the same thing. I pull the shoulders forward, I pull them back, squeeze my glutes, ribs, hips, and then I'm going to press into the floor, pressing into that isometric hold, and then relax. So I might not press all the way up, I might just press like an inch off the ground or feel that engagement and that pressure, and I turn it into an isometric hold so it can maintain body shape and position while I'm in doing that press. And that's important, so I don't want you to worry about the full press if you can't quite maintain the midsection on that press. So hold the bottom for about three to five seconds, release, reset the position, and then take it down again, all right? So a couple different options for the knee planks, or sorry, the forearm planks and the humeral glide. Experiment with them, play with them, you guys. It's kind of fun to experiment and play, see what we need to work on, and also sometimes taking a step back from just working on the full, full push, or even from the full toe plank can come a long way and really give you a helping hand moving forward. Quick little recap, two to three rounds with a plank knee for two to down dog for three to five reps. Forearm plank for three seconds to forearm side plank for three seconds for three reps. And humeral glide to knee push up for three to five, anywhere from two to three rounds. So take that down nice and steady, keep that upper body up, warm up that body, and get work on some skill for the push, and then come along with me for the next phase. So pause the video, and then come join me for our laying core work. So our initiation, our first little piece, is all gonna be on our back. And what I need to have, I need to be laying somewhere close to something that I can anchor my fingers under, like a couch, a chair, something along the lines that I can just tuck my hands under and use as an anchor for my shoulders. I don't have anything at this moment, so I'm just gonna pretend that I have a couch that I'm just tucking my fingers under the lip. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my feet up so I can get my low back pulled into the floor, so my ribs and hips are pulled together. I'm pressing into the couch or the chair, and then I'm gonna pull my knees in, maintaining that tension, and then I'm gonna extend them straight up into that laying L position. So I get those toes straight up, my ribs and hips are pulling, I'm pressing into that couch, activating through the shoulders, keeping that nice strong position, I'm gonna hold for 10 to 30 seconds. If I cannot straighten both legs uh, into that L position, and I find it easier to straighten my leg, I will do the same engagement, just with a foot on the floor, and that will allow me to keep this leg in a straight position and take some of the stress off of my hamstrings. And that's totally fine. So I want you guys to keep that in mind. We're looking at the straightest leg possible for that L position. Don't worry about two or one. Your core doesn't know the difference. Just switch your legs halfway through, and that will allow you to work on both hamstrings in that movement set. After you're done the 10 to 30 seconds of laying l sit. You're gonna keep your legs up, single or double, keeping the ribs and hips pulled in, and you're gonna work on that laying toe touch. So you're gonna pull the ribs in, hold for a second or two, lower down, hold for a beat, squeeze, hold for a second or two, come back down, hold for a beat, and then again, squeeze up, holding for one or two seconds, and then lowering down, holding for a beat. The reason I want you guys holding a second or two at both ends is first off at the top end, you are gonna be holding that compression, so it's gonna be a little extra juice for the core. On the bottom end, what it does is it takes away any urge or any chance of using any momentum to get yourself back up. So there's nothing wrong with taking that second at the bottom, all right, because it's gonna take away the momentum of rolling down and coming right back up again. So use that as a chance to reset the tension perhaps, make sure we're moving with control. Our last exercise is the tuck hollow with extension. So from here, I'm gonna pull those knees right in. Shoulders are gonna to come towards the knees, knees to the shoulders. I'm gonna try and maintain this nice tight tuck and then extend my legs straight as best I can and then pull my heels back to my glute. Extend, try to keep the knees close to the shoulders and come back in. I can also, again, do this single leg, and I can work on that tuck and that extension, depending on how tight my hamstrings are. It'll allow me to work on getting a little straighter engagement and a better tuck. So don't shy away from that single leg, depending on how tight your hamstrings are. It can be a really good helping hand. 
So again, with those last two, with the laying toe touch and the tuck hollow with extension, where there's a one to two second pause on either end of the movement. And again, that's just there to make sure that we're not using momentum and it gives us a chance to stay under compression and tension just for a little extra long, all right? Or extra moment, we'll say. Quick little recap for that little triplet is a laying L-sit, 10 to 30 seconds, finding something that you can tuck your fingers under to use as an anchor for your presser, pressure in. Then once you're done, you're gonna take your hands out, move right into that laying toe touch for five to 10, one to two second hold on either end of the movement, and then move right into that tuck hollow with extension, five to 10 reps at a one to two second hold again on either side of the movement. Two to three rounds. If you can treat that like a superset and move one to the next to the next, that is gonna give you some serious burn in that midsection. If you can't and you're like, I need a moment in between, that's okay. I want those movements to be executed as best to your ability as you can. So if you need to take a moan in between, please do so. But if you want a little extra added burn and extra challenge, try and do it, boom, 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 rest at the end for a little bit, and then reset the round. So pause the video, take down that core piece, it's gonna be a burner, it's gonna be fun, all right? But take it down, work on that compression, work on those positions, because that's what's gonna really help those toe to bar, those tuck ups that just a pulling position, hang position in general. So really strong midsection, really tight pull, and really tight hollow. Coming into that next phase, we're gonna work the lower body, get things ready to go, and we're gonna kickstart it off with the single leg RDL. So we're gonna take it three to five per side. So I'm gonna to turn to the side, I'm gonna get my feet underneath of my hips, and I'm gonna pick my first starting side to be my left. My right toe is gonna to go back as my, my kickstand. My hips are square, my hands are to the front, I'm standing nice and I'm squeezing in on the imaginary pillow or cushion or dumbbell that I'm holding and I'm going to pull my hips back, taking my hands down to my knee. And you'll notice that I'm not leaning into this leg at all. I'm just pulling back and focusing on that balancing leg and then standing tall. So I'm trying to keep the hips square. I pull the hip to the back of the room, keeping my center mass over top of this foot and then standing. Now, there's another option we can play with that involves the balancing side of things, but I still want you to focus on that good position for your hamstring and your glute. So if you don't feel it if you try to do the balancing variation, keep that foot down so you can find the glute and hamstring. But the balancing variation is still set up the same way. I get my hips square, my foot's down as a kickstand, I set my upper body in that position, and now as I pull my hip back, I'm just going to let that back foot kind of float, all right? Maintaining my center mass still over top of the foot. It's just this foot doesn't touch the ground anymore. So I'm still doing the same motion, except now balance comes into effect. And I have to really work to try and keep my balance throughout the entire motion. So again, I want you to be able to feel the glute and hamstring involved in that. So if you're like, yeah, I don't really feel it when I do the balancing variation. Kickstand that leg down really work on finding that glute and hamstring. That is primary focus and most important. Our next exercise is our single leg good morning with rotation. So we're gonna continue con with that single leg work, except I'm gonna bring that foot into the front. I'm gonna bring my hands together in the front. I'm gonna squeeze my glutes. I'm gonna pull my hips back in the same way I just did in that RDL, but this time I'm gonna rotate towards that front leg and straight leg, and then stand tall. You'll notice my knees stay apart. They're not caving towards each other as I rotate, and that's very, very important. So from the side, I get that heel, leg is straight, squeeze my glutes, I pull back. My balancing leg is soft, just like it is in the RDL, but you're gonna feel that sensation in that straight leg in the glute and hamstring. If you're feeling it down in your calf, you need to engage the glutes in the beginning of the movement and focus on that squeeze throughout the entire hinge motion. So you'll do three per side, working on that nice rotation. Don't worry about if you can't touch the elbow to the knee or the leg, just take it as deep as you can and maintaining that good position. From there, we move into our sumo squat. So I'm gonna get, get myself set up in my wider stance squat. My toes are slightly turned out and I'm standing nice and tall. I'm squeezing my glutes, I get nice and tall. And I'm gonna pull my hips to my heels with a little bit more focus on pressing the knees out so that my knees aren't collapsing in. 
It's very important that we find a stance that allows us to be wider than our regular squat stance, but still allows our knees to stay stacked over top of the heels in that good position so that they're not collapsing inward. I'm going to turn to the side so you guys can see my back position as well. My hips go to the heels, keeping my chest up nice and strong, and I just take it as deep as I can maintain that normal squat mechanic back position. So we don't want to go so deep that we round out under the pelvis, we only want to take it as deep as we would in a normal squat position. So we have a three rep count at a 3-1-3 tempo. Take your time there, you guys. Really work on opening up those hips, kind of bringing everything together after that single leg work. Our next exercise is our jump squat. We're going to use this to warm up things for the work set. So we have three different variations with this. We have our regular air squat. So I'm going to bring my feet into my normal squat stance, toes slightly turned out, weight through the laces, and my body nice and tall. I can take my hips to my heels, just like the, the sumo squat, but I'm not pushing the knees out as much as I would in the sumo squat. We want to keep the feet flat. So that's variation number one, regular air squat, nice and smooth. The next variation is a non-jumping jump squat, so we get a little bit more acceleration out of the bottom. So we take it down, we drive it down, but we don't leave the ground. We keep that body nice and strong, nice and set, and just work on up and down. There's a little bit of lift in the heel, but no separation from the ground. Our last option is the jump squat, where we take it down, same idea, and we run, and then we come back down, absorbing into the same squat stance we were just in, and focusing on that same absorption, except we leave the ground briefly. I'm not trying to jump super high, but I am trying to get a little bit of lift and opening of the hips and the knees. So whatever variation you'd like to play with or combination through that 20 seconds, please do so. Remembering this is not about trying to get maximum reps, it's just so moving for 20 seconds and starting to build some intensity in that squat to get the heart rate, the legs, and everything ready for the workout. You're gonna rest for 10 seconds and then you're gonna move into some side lunges. And the side lunge again is just there to work on opening up the hips and making sure everything's ready for what's to come. So you're gonna get into a pretty wide stance and what I'm gonna do is think about my squat mechanic. Pulling my hip to my heel and letting my knee track the toe. So I stay tall, I squeeze my glutes, I pull the hip towards my heel, keeping my chest upright and that knee tracking the toe and I push through that leg. I take the hip back and down again, nice and tall, feet stay flat, and then I push through that leg to get tall. From profile, I get into that wide stance, again, drawing the hip to the heel, trying to keep it like a squat, pushing through that position, hip to heel, and standing tall. So taking your time with that, again, it's 20 seconds, you're not gonna get a crazy amount of reps of that, and that's okay. We just wanna make sure we're starting to open up those ankles, those knees, those hips, and staying nice and upright. Quick recap for the lower body piece. We have a single leg RDL for three to five a side. We have a single leg good morning with rotation for three per side. Sumo squat for three at a three, one, three. Into a jump squat or a variation of jump squat for 20 seconds. Rest 10, right into a side lunge for 20 seconds. And then you can rest and then take it down two to three times. Pause the video, take it down, have some fun. Get yourself primed and ready. We're gonna move into the exercises of the workout get you ready to go for that lovely little birthday experience. All right. So pause, take it down, come back and see me. Let's start with the push-up. So our first exercise in the first uh, work set is a push-up. The push-up, we have multiple variations, and if you've been working on countertops, chairs, um, tables, ottomans, continue to do that elevated push-up position. Keep building that strength. Build that push-up in that good position. I'm going to take you to the floor and show you three different variations starting with our full toe push-up. So it gets set first off in our plank. I pull my ribs and hips in, pressing my shoulders to the sky, and coming forward and down, keeping my elbows stacked over top of my hand, and then pressing back into that nice solid plank position. I'm maintaining that position the entire time I rock that push-up. So that midsection stays so tight, and that's why we want to build that like we were doing in those planks earlier, and that hollow position in that core piece in the middle. 
So really focus on that nice tight action in the midsection because that really helps make or break your push out. If we don't have the full push, what we can play with is a variation of our lower. So we get set up in our plank, hands are under the shoulders, I pull into that plank, I lower down through my toes, I keep the tension through my core, my knees touch, press through the knees, back up into that plank. I lower, my upper body doesn't change, my shoulder position doesn't change, I just lower my knees and then press back up. So as soon as I lower my knees, I'm not losing engagement through my upper body. I'm staying tight the entire time. Our last variation, we don't quite have the lower to maintain shoulder position or core position, is the knees. So what we can work on is that starting in our plank, establishing our good position, then dropping the knees straight down, and we're still in that good plank, and I come down, and I come back up. And I'm still maintaining that hollow position through those ribs. So those ribs and hips are pulled in, my shoulders are pressing up to the sky, and I'm touching my chest to the floor, keeping that nice stacked position through the elbows and the hands. So this position that I'm in right now is kind of the position we want the elbows in, about a 45. So if I was looking at you from the top, you'd look like a little arrow, all right? We wanna stay away from up here, and it's okay to be tight, 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 but we wanna think about stabilizing the shoulders the most we can. And this 45 degree position helps stabilize and incorporate as much, as much musculature as we can to stabilize the shoulder in that press. So we wanna use what we have and to keep that shoulder safe and happy. Now, the next exercise is the squat thrust. And like I mentioned earlier, I'd like to have all of you to rock the squat thrust, even if you have full burpees. So the squat thrust has its own sense of challenges, which is hitting that core position in that plank under speed and dynamic kind of power. So I bring my hands down like a burpee. I can jump into that plank, jump the feet up, and come back down. From there, I can also bring my hands down. I can jump back, step in, jump. Or I can step back, step in, or I can hybrid it up, come back down, step back, jump in. And I can do any one of those variations or options for my squat thrust. The key is my shoulder stays over my hands and we hit that really nice plank every single time. After the squat thrust, we get to lay down for a moment and work on our pike sit. So my legs are gonna be straight. And if I need to, I can also anchor them to give myself a little more assistance into getting up side to face. So from there, I'm gonna lay down. My hands are gonna touch as best over my head as I can. I'm gonna bring my arms up and over, touching my toes if I can, or touching as far down my thighs and legs as I can. That allows my legs to stay straight and gives my hamstrings a good stretch. Again, laying down, touching, using that momentum to come up in that sit-up and allowing myself to kind of use and get a nice dynamic sit up. It's not a strict sit up. It is a, it is a uh, dynamic variation of the sit up. So we do want to allow ourselves to use that arm whip and come back up. So embrace it, have fun with it. It gets burning after a while and you got quite a few to do in this work set. Our last exercise is the jump squat for 12. So I'm just gonna show you again a couple of full jump squats. You can use any variation of jump squat you'd like in this workout, all the way to the air squats. You can take these down to no leaving of the ground and just working on 12 good air squats per round. But for the jump squat, I'm just gonna do three in a row, nice and steady. So I squat well, establish a good down position, drive, and I work on absorbing into that bottom position. So the down portion is not necessarily super fast, we want to establish a good base so we can drive out of the hole really well and then pull back down and absorb and decelerate so I can set myself up for a good drive out of the bottom again. So play with that, have some fun. Whatever variation of squat you're doing, I want you to work on that quality movement and have some fun with them because squats are great. It's a good time. And or if you'd like to do a squat to a target, please do so as well. Keep those squats honest and efficient. Now as a quick recap for the workout, those are the four exercises we're playing with, because in the next phase of the workout, you're doing the same exercises just in reverse order. So how the workout goes, four rounds, six push-ups, eight squat thrusts, 
10 pike sit up, 12 jump squat or squat variation. You'll hit that for four rounds. Once you're done, mark your time, rest for three minutes, and then you're gonna do four rounds of 12 jump squat, 10 pike sit up, eight squat thrust, finishing with six push ups. You'll do that for four rounds, mark your time, and call it a day. And it's gonna be a fun little gasser, it'll be relatively quick, but I want you to try and keep those rounds consistent if you can, and keep those movements clean. Happy birthday, Yoda. I hope you have a fantastic day today. I hope you enjoy it with your family. Oh, so much love surrounding you. It's gonna be a grand time. But for everyone, work strong, work well, and work for quality. We'll see you tomorrow for a little bit of core work coming up. Bye, you guys.